Hi, Steve Gale here. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, an S3 bucket, which we're going to use to host a um, static website. So we'll create the S3 bucket, we'll um, enable public access, and um, then what we'll do is we'll upload some web content into the bucket, and um, then we'll enable access to the, um, to the bucket and uh, test and confirm that our website is being hosted um, in S3. So the first thing to do if we haven't already done so is to um, go to the um, S3 AWS console. So we go and select um, S3 here. And um, what we want to do is we want to create a bucket. So we'll create a bucket. And look for a name, we'll just call it um, website-123. Seven, nine, two. And we'll leave the region as the same. And you can see here that it's got um, block all public access. Now, if you were storing files, then you'd probably want to block public access and only give access to certain users. But if we're hosting a website, obviously a website typically would have public access. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna untick the block public access. And, um, and when we do that, we need to acknowledge that, um, that these settings result in the bucket and the objects becoming public. So this is sort of like a, just a verification that you, you really know what you're doing when you're doing this. So you want to tick that, I acknowledge. And um, then we can go down. We don't need versioning and um, we don't need tags and we don't need encryption. So we can create the bucket. Up. And we need to get rid of our uppercase character. So let's try this now. And we create the bucket. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, add some tags. So we'll select the bucket. And um, here. And we'll go to the properties tab. And um, we're going to go down to tags. And we're going to add a tag. So we're going to go to edit and add tag, and we'll put as our key uh, department, and a value is going to be marketing. And we'll um, save those changes. So by putting a tag on a bucket, then it helps us to keep track of what this bucket is about. In this case, it's a marketing, it's a marketing bucket for um, website. So the other thing we want to do is we want to go down to um, right down the bottom and we've got static website hosting. So in the static website hosting, we want to click the edit and we're going to enable static website hosting and um, here for our index document, we're going to use uh, index.html. So if we just hit the bucket directly, or if we hit the website directly, index.html will be the um, default page that gets displayed. And um, with our error document, we're going to use error.html. And we want to host, host a static website, so that looks good. And we don't need any redirection rules. So we can um, save the changes. So scrolling down to the bottom, back down to static website hosting, we've got our bucket website endpoint. And you can see here it's HTTP website 12392, which was our, which was our bucket name, dot S3 website US East 1, amazon aws.com. 
So what we can do is we can copy that link. And if we open up that link in here, we paste the link, we should get a forbidden. So at this stage, we're getting a forbidden error. And that's what's to be expected at this point in time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to return back to the bucket and we're going to upload some files. So let's click out of here. Let's go back to buckets and let's go to our bucket. And what we're going to do is we've got this link here, upload. So what I want to do is I want to upload some files. So I'm going to choose upload. And I've got add files here. So, or I can drag and drop. But um, what I can do is I can say add files, and then I can navigate to the files that I want to um, upload, or I can just use drag and drop. So let's use drag and drop. So I've got some files. I should be able to find some files. Just bear with me for a minute. So I have some files here. So I've got an index.html, which is the um, default page that will be hit um, when I browse to this website. And I've also got a CSS file and a, a JavaScript file. So these are all static files. Uh, Client-side JavaScript is static uh, in the sense that there's no, there's no um, back-end server-side code being executed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab these files here and I'm going to drag them into to upload. I'll try that again. And you can see here, here's my files that have been uploaded. I've got my index.html my script.js and my style.css. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, upload these files. And we can see here that the upload has succeeded. So if we go back to here and we do a refresh, notice previously we, we got 403 forbidden. If we run this again, we still get our 403 forbidden. And the reason for that is that the, um, the, the objects that we've uploaded are still private. So what we need to do is we need to make them publicly accessible as well. So we'll return to the S3 Management Console. So we're going to close here. And what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these three objects. You can see we're here, this is our website and these are our objects. So we're selecting the all three objects. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to actions and we're gonna make them public. So we're gonna choose make public. And, um, and then make public. And you can see here that we've successfully edited public access and we've got three objects which are publicly accessible. So now if we go back to our link here and we, ref we do a refresh with a bit of luck and we get our website. So we've successfully um, uploaded our, um, our website content. We've made our S3 bucket publicly accessible and the three objects that we've uploaded, we've enabled them for public access. And uh, we can now we've got a static website being hosted in, um, in S3. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our content here and we're going to modify, we're just going to um, modify um, the, um, the content a little bit. So I'll use this one. And um, we want to open with, uh, what have we got here? Let's try Visual Studio Code. And we might make a change somewhere in the HTML code. 
have a look what you can do. Looking for something to change. It's plenty there we can change, but let's go in here and um, um, what, what section have we got here? Contact section. So um, let's let's put here um, some text. We can be contacted. That'll do. I'll delete this line and save that. So we've made this change. So what we're going to do is we're going to re-upload our now changed file and um, see what we need to do to, um, to maintain changes on the website. So we'll minimize this just for the moment. We'll close this. And um, what we'll do now is we'll go back and uh, we'll re-upload. So what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll re-upload the file that we've changed, which is this one here, index.html, and we'll re-upload that. And we've succeeded, so we've we've changed that um, index.html file. So what we need to do is we need to close this. Then we need to go back here, and we need to select this one. And actions, we need to make this public again because it's a new object. And make public. And you can see we've got one object that we successfully made public. So now if we go back and we refresh our website. And we go back to contact. We can see that the changes that we've made, we can be contacted at the following address blah, have been successfully updated on our on our website. That concludes this demonstration. Thanks for watching.